Hey guys, I know I said I wasn't going to be here probably until the end of the month, but I just had to jump on here and show you this really cute modification that I made for this pattern that I've been working on, Pumpkins for Sale by Lori Holt. Now, not to take anything away from this pattern, it's absolutely adorable and it's super cute, but I had this idea, and the reason I had this idea is because years ago I stitched this snowman, and he had this little fringe on his scarf. I hope that's coming coming through clear. It has this little fringe that was attached with these little knots. And I couldn't remember how I had done that, but I knew that there was some fringe. So when I was working on the scarecrow, I thought, wouldn't that be kind of interesting and fun to make it three-dimensional by adding some fringe to where the hay is coming out of his sleeves? So I played around with that. And first I tried it by doing the little knots like this, but I didn't like the way the knots looked as much, so I kind of played around with some little lark's head knots, and I just wanted to show you what I've come up with here. So this, on this other side, so I'm still stitching this, but on the other side, that's how the pattern is charted, just to have the hay, you know, coming out, you know, as cross stitches, obviously, and around his hair there. And so I am gonna add some fringe here too, but I was playing around with that, and I thought that looked really cute, having that little three-dimensional fringe come out of there. And then as I was doing it, I thought you guys might want to know how I did it just in case you want to make that same modification. It's pretty simple to do. It's a little bit tedious on because I'm using an 18 count. It would be a little bit easier on 14 count. But I'm going to go ahead and attach a little video on how I did that just in case you want to make that same modification. This is how I do the little fringe. Go ahead and get your floss that you're using and use, you want to start with all six strands. If you want it to turn out the way I did, you can obviously do these with more strands of floss or less, but mine ended up, mine ended up having six strands and I like the way that looks, but feel free to use more. So you just grab all six strands and you cut about a length, about six inches. If you want to work with a little bit longer pieces, you can. Um, I know it's about an inch from here to here, so we'll just count that. All right, there's about six inches and you go ahead and snip that. And then what you wanna do is you wanna separate this into two sets of three. I would recommend not pulling them all apart one by one though, because the knots will be easier to do if, if these are kind of stuck together. So just find the three and separate it. You can't really do this with long floss, but a short piece like this, it'll be fine if you just pull the three apart. So then you've got already two of them ready to go. So you take your needle and I think it, I find it works best with a, a needle with a large eye because you want to fit all six strands, all six strands through. So I grabbed a needle with a large eye. I have no idea what size this needle is because between you and me, I never know what size needles I'm using. I just grab whatever needle is near me and start stitching with it. And then you can go ahead and thread that. And usually with a fat, or a, you know, an eye that's wide, you can stick all three, I mean, all six of them through pretty easily. Okay, and then you have it. So it's like this, so it's got the loop because we're just gonna do a lark's head knot. So I will zoom in and show you up close how to do that. I'll show you. So I've already started doing some of the fringe down on the feet, uh, around the feet of the scarecrow. And I've done part of it already, but I thought I would stop and show you that what you do first is you want to do a back stitch. So I've already done a couple of back stitches going, so you can just watch me as I do a couple more back stitches. One stitch, one stitch length. Let me make sure I'm in frame. Just, you know, kind of how you do the back stitch. Don't pull it too tight because you want to be able to see them because you need to find them when you attach your little knot. So you're just going to just do a back stitch just like this with two strands. So like I said, don't pull it too tight 
And if you want to use a contrasting thread to be able to see, maybe I should have done that for the tutorial. But there you go. So I just did back stitches across there. Now I'm going to go ahead and anchor that on the back and then I'll show you how I attach the knot. Okay, so with your pre-threaded little looped floss here. Now I've just been attaching my little knots every other stitch and I think that looks good. So we'll go with this one right here. If you just can try to spot where that back stitch is, that's why you don't want to do it too tight, but you put the needle through like that and you pull it. I'm going to get my scissors because you want, you want that to not really have a twist in it. And then you just go through that loop like that. And use your finger to push it tight and there you have a little knot. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of these and then we'll trim it up and look at the final result. Okay, now that you have it all done, this is the fun part. We're going to give him a little haircut. So now you can just hold all your strands. And we're going to cut. I'm going to make sure we're in focus still. Um, I just kind of aimed toward maybe, you, you don't want to cut them too short at the beginning. So I just kind of aimed toward like maybe the, where the bottom of the stick is there. Because you can always trim it a little more, but you don't want them to go too you don't want to go too short with it. And then you want to just kind of separate them a little bit. Those might be a little long. I might play around with it, but I just wanted to pull them nice and tight. And yeah, I think I did the, actually, I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it. Before I, you know, decide and make a decision to cut them too short, I'll, I'll look at it for a bit and see. Because like I said, once you, once you cut them too short, there's no going back. So I'll just let uh, that process for a minute and see if I like the way that looks. Okay, and... That's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Once again, not to take anything away from the already cute pattern, but if you like to add a little bit of dimension to your cross stitch, that was just a fun thing to try. Okay, thanks for watching. After that tutorial I showed you, I went ahead and continued doing the rest of the hay on my scarecrow, and I noticed as I was working on the rest of it that I didn't like the way the hay was just kind of sticking kind of straight up. off the project a little bit like this, kind of like how you can see right here. So I thought I would add a little, one more step that I did to sort of tame the hay, give it a little bit of direction. So I did that up here in the arms. See now instead of just sticking straight out, it's kind of, it's just kind of going in the direction that it should go. And so I did that with all of this. And I'm going to show you 
as soon as I hook my camera on the tripod, I'm going to show you how I did that. It's a real simple little step to show you how I tamed the hay. And I also put a little bit of hay coming out of the top of his hat up there, but I'm not really sure I'm going to keep that. It might just be a little bit too extra, if you know what I mean. So, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or not. Okay, let's get started. And I do apologize for my nails. I took off my purple nail polish, and now it kind of just left with a little bit of a stain. So, yeah, let's not look at my fingernails. Okay, so what, you, what I'm going to do to sort of tame this is just lay these down sort of the way you want them to go. Actually, tighten up some of these a little bit here. Okay, so what we're going to do is just do a little backstitch. So I'm just going to kind of hop over with a little backstitch over these, and it just gives it, sort of just allows them to lay flat. So I'm only using one strand of floss. And we're just going to go over this first one, and you kind of need to hold all these. This would have been easier to do before I trimmed them. Okay, so let's, let's lay them flat. You know what? Let me do something here. Okay, I just went to go grab a little envelope that I can just sort of lay over these to sort of keep them tamed. So what you're going to do with one strand of floss is just do one little stitch right over that, like that. Come back up. Do another stitch. not really going up or down any particular spot underneath. I'm just sort of, you know, just kind of winging it. I mean, it's hay. It doesn't have to be perfect. One last stitch to do. And then you want to just anchor that nice on the back. And then what you have is more, uh, shall we say, directional hay. And I am going to probably trim this and make this one a little bit, these a little bit shorter. But I think that it turns out a little bit better that way. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope that helps. Bye. Hi guys, it's been a few days and I thought I would check in and show you my progress because I've been working a lot on pumpkins for sale since the last clip that you just saw. And I brought you outside because it was so dark in my house I couldn't get good lighting so I'm sitting outside on this beautiful fall morning and as you can see I got a lot of leaves that's my job me and the boys are gonna tackle these leaves today because we're expecting a snowstorm tomorrow they're saying six inches but I don't know so I came out here because I had good lighting so let's show you what I've done on this zoom in a little bit. I think I hadn't had the sunflowers quite done over here so I have completed three sunflowers and five pumpkins. And I say completed because you might think well I need to go back and fill these little spines or whatever you call those in but I've decided to leave them like that. They kind of get have sort of like a Quaker pumpkin look to them or a Quaker motif sort of so I think it looks great leaving those just the way they are. Gives it a little bit of texture. And yes, I think I, I didn't have much of this sunflower done, so I went ahead and got that one done. Now, all I have left to do are, let me, are the, you can see the stems for the three pumpkins I have left. So three pumpkins, three sunflowers, those are, those are the centers for the sunflowers. And then I have the sign post and the sign and a crow. And then I'll be done with this. Let's look at the pattern here, or the picture again. So, yes, I basically have all of this done, and I just need 
three sunflowers, three pumpkins, crow, and the sign. And then I'll be done with that. I'm really enjoying this and I want to continue working on it, but I think I'm going to give my buttons and beads pumpkin lantern a little bit of an attention because I've hardly done anything with that. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this though. I've really enjoyed doing filling in the blocks of color. It's been relaxing because I've had some webinars to watch and so it's kind of nice to have some mindless stitching to do. Even though I did, the way I was doing the pumpkins is I was just, I had like a thread, a length of thread of each of the colors going and so then I would do one of that color, one of that color, one of that color, so I never really felt like I was doing one solid color of orange. I sort of swapped between the four different colors and it kept it interesting, but still really, really relaxing. These are the floss bitties. Did I show you that? That I got also from uh, the fat, you can get these at the fat quarter shop. They have seasonal ones, some Halloween ones, but those might, those were limited edition. But these are just have the motifs of just the sewing, diff different sewing motifs. You've got the needle and thread, the scissors, the thimble and the, the skein of floss, which is so cute. So I have loaded, so I usually stitch from a master set of DMC. So what I did is just grabbed a length of thread of each of the colors that I need and then put them on here so that I have them just ready to go. And then when one runs out, I can just put another another length of thread on. And I didn't label these either because I didn't need to. Uh, it was pretty obvious that, you know, that's the color. You know, these are the two yellows for the sunflower. Um, yes, and then, you know, there's just two greens for the sunflowers, the two blues, so it was pretty easy. And these are the four pumpkins. I just have them on here in the order that I'm using them. So, but I do have some DMC floss stickers that would, uh, you could use those to stick on here. And, um, or you can just put a piece of tape and label them. But I really like these. They're cute. They're big. I put them on a ring. And let me pause it because I'm going to show you. You can have them hanging like this, or if you want... Hold on, I've only got one hand, so let Okay, or you can wrap the floss around them, just like you do a regular bobbin. So, very cute, yes, you can get those. Those are the It's So Emma brand, and you can get them at the Fat Quarter Shop. So, yes, I'm just gonna, yeah, I might actually sit out here and stitch. It's a little chilly, but it's actually kind of comfortable because I've got my crocheted ba Breaking Bad blanket. You've seen me. You probably, if you followed me, you know, you remember when I was crocheting this. This is from uh, the pattern I got because this is the one that appears in the movie, uh, in the series Breaking Bad. They have on their couch. So, yes. I tracked down that pattern, crocheted that, had to swap out my flip-flops for slippers. Always a sad day when I do that. Oh, and Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle. She's like the queen of socks. I actually am wearing a pair of socks I knitted. The one and only successful pair of socks I've ever knitted. Um, they're doable, but I find them very tedious. Kind of like how you find working on perforated paper. I find knitting socks to be very tedious. But I learned how to make these from... Tina over at Fancy Lady. Uh, Fancy Lady Cross Stitch. What's your what's your new channel name? It's Tina. I think it's Fancy Lady Stitching. But she had a tutorial and I followed along on how to knit socks. So yeah. I don't know. I'm not a sock knitter. Wow, there's geese coming in. Hold on. Oh. Looks like the Canada geese have arrived. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope that wherever you are, you're getting some stitching done. See you in the next video.